Hey, Mike. Hi, Hello. Alan. Hey, guys. Hi, Christine. Hi. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Staying cool? Oh, it's hot. I know. It's <clears throat> hot as heck. I'm drinking some iced tea and I'm like, oh, it's still not touching this. <laughs> We, we had a huge tree in front of our house taken down, a massive tree, and it was providing so much shade from the west, and oh, now the house no. is just getting baked. Oh, oh I no. Take the tree down. Because it was, it was breaking up the driveway, and the driveway was holding up the tree. Oh. Well, we did get a, a a baby pool for the puppy. So if anybody wants to come and sit in it, pull down, you're all invited. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's see. Uh, so d I got you, Dylan. I don't see Michelle yet. I just we just got a text from her. She said her computer is updating. Perfect oh. timing. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh yep. I see your text. Oh yep. Okay. Well, let me pull my packet and agenda up, and we'll see what we can do here. You'll want to pull Gene Vrobel over. Okay, got her. Let's see, who else? Kathy? We got Kathy, she's coming over. Oh, so we have a full commission tonight. That's great. Hot. We were talking about that. <laughs> I don't know if you were on yet. We're all like, woo. <laughs> Hot. Yeah. And this is the coolest day for the next week. Oh, don't say that. I just watched the news. I was like yelling at the TV. I'm like, no, a hundred? Like you actually said a hundred? That means 103. Uh, Christine, I, this is David. Can you hear me? And have I arrived yet at the meeting? Yeah, you're here. Yeah, yeah we can see you and we can hear Something you. Something is telling me that I'm still waiting, so I thought oh. I'd check. Oh. No. Somehow I can't see the, the all of the rest of you, but I guess that's if no big you, deal. Are you on a laptop? I'm on an iPad. Okay, I'm not. Mike knows how to make it a gallery view. It just touch your screen, and on your left, it, it'll say. Um, gallery, gallery. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Normally that works for me on Zoom, but it's not right now. But I guess. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not very good at this, and I can't. I, I'm glad somebody can hear me. I have no idea. I've never done this before, so it's the first time for me. You may. And I'm only seeing one person at a time. I have no idea how to make me see more. I see Dylan. 
Are you on a laptop or an iPad? Computer. Computer. Okay. If you if you mouse over to the right corner, you'll see some dots. Yeah. And hit gallery view or galley view or something. I don't see anything that says anything. I just see like make the screen bigger. Okay. Screen's bigger. This says escape to full screen. That's all I see. Um, I don't see that here. I see down the bottom, I see chat to share screen participants and more. That's what I see. Hmm. Oh, I'll try this. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right. I've got something. So now I see the participants on the right. Yeah. But I don't okay. see. Okay, I guess I can only watch one at a time. Well, you should be able to see. <clears throat> um, go into a gallery view. Uh, uh, yeah, gallery sure. view. At the top, it should show gallery view, exit full screen. If you mouse up to the very top on the right. Yeah, it might say speaker view. Well, that's what it shows when you make it just a single. Which I think hers is. Oh, I'm not seeing any of that. I'm seeing on the left, I see, what's that? I wonder. Oh, Planning Commission webinar. Okay. Um, enhanced encryption recording. I'm not seeing anything that says, it just says, there's a place where it says leave webinar on the lower right. And then on the lower bottom, it says participants. When I clicked on that, in the upper right corner of the camera views, is there like a series of nine squares? Four little boxes. No, four little boxes. Like, it make the screen bigger, basically. Full screen. So that's all I got. So, okay, well, I will guess I'll listen and I'll figure it out. Okay. Do you have Zoom video or not? I can see all of you individually. Right now, I see you, Alan. Yeah, but how about you? Do you see your... No, I don't. Okay. See I don't think she's launched her video yet. Yeah, not sure. I know. Where do I do that? Uh, so to start value. Okay, yep. hold on. Okay, allow. There you uh, are. Now I see. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay, I, I see me. That's good because our our big tool is we raise our hands to vote. Ah uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> So how's the shoulder? Well, it's been very slow progress, but at least I'm progressing slowly. It's, um, I can't do anything with it. It's, uh, they can move it around some, but it's, it's much slower going. I had a real setback about week three. And ever since then, I'm progressing, but, uh, uh, you know, I can only, I can raise it barely, well, I can't raise it, but they can raise it barely past my shoulder. I can use my hand, or as I can, you know, I, I can hold my hand up, that's what I do. <laughs> so I can't, Good. I can't raise it on its own at all. But at least it's connected, it's just, they said it's gonna be about nine months before it's back to normal. So it could be 12 months, cause it's going pretty slow, but. I, I just saw um, Michelle pop on. I go twice a week, so I'm getting better, just, Taking time, so I have to vote and listen now. <laughs> at least I'm, at least I'm out of pain so bad. That's a good thing. I'm not, I'm not struggling with the pain now. Yeah, that's good. We got everybody. Hello there. Sorry, everybody. My computer's gone haywire. <laughs> oh, now you're up and running. Hi. See you. It, uh, it did one of those updates when I had it on last. So, of course, when I turned it on, it started going through all of its machinations and woo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Okay, it looks like we're ready to go. Okay. That's kind of a record. I think we're a lot faster than the city council is to get going. So, <laughs> good, good start. So, um, I'll call the... July 8th, 2020 meeting of the Manitou Springs Planning Commission to order. And the first item of business is approval of the minutes of the June 10th meeting. Would someone like to move to approve? I move approval of the Planning Commission's regular meeting agenda minutes from July 8th, 2020. 
Okay, is there a second? I can second that. Okay, any discussion? Okay, so those of us who were there could raise their hands to approve. And looks like we have four yes and three abstentions. <coughs> so uh, moving right along, um, <clears throat> we have no unfinished business, so we'll move into new business. And um, since uh, it looks like item three is not going to be considered tonight, would there be a motion to reorder the new business? So we do item three first and then item two. So I'll make a motion to reorder uh, item, is it item three to, no, item three to item two and item two to one. I don't have it in front of me, so. Yeah, well, I don't, yeah, just switch the order of two and three. Just switch the order of two and three. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. So we'll start the business meeting and I'll just go through my routine. Uh, basically what we're gonna do is we'll um, call an item, I'll call an item for consideration and planning staff will um, describe what the request is, what their findings are and recommendations. And um, following that, we will allow the applicant to speak. And following that, we'll open up the hearing to the public if anybody wants to comment on the item. And following that, we'll vote to either approve, deny, possibly postpone, maybe we'll modify the request. And as we go through this, we'll follow the uh, guidance of the municipal code. We don't legislate, we just interpret what's in the code. So with that, are there any uh, ex parte contacts or uh, conflicts to disclose? Okay, with that, we'll start. Uh, first item is um, preliminary plat for major subdivision 101 to 119 Becker's Lane, Eddie Bishop applicant. So the, uh, the uh, applicant has been informed the public notice went out considerably later than what we had recommended. And after discussing it, the planning director and I decided to um, postpone so uh, we are recommending, uh, requesting postponement to the August meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Is there a motion to postpone? So I um, move to postpone PP 2001 to the July meeting. August. August, August meeting. I mean, August meeting, yeah. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? <laughs> Let's vote. The motion cat is unanimous. Um, I have one question, Michelle. The, the posting at the premises is not really being displayed. It keeps getting flipped over and um, I've gone by. I didn't even notice it was posted because that posting is apparently not secured very well on the chain link fence. Okay. Is that the responsibility of the applicant or to say? No, we, we post the property. Okay. So when we repost it, um, we'll ask the code enforcement officers, usually the one that goes out and posts it, he probably needs to put some extra cable ties on it to make sure it stays in one place. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, next item is... Um, Variance 2006, a variant side yard setback, setback five feet six inches at 317 Plainview Place, Christopher Billings, Billings Construction Group on behalf of Timothy Fazette, owner. And is the applicant, um, I guess they here now, so they're fine, okay. Okay. So uh, this is an after, after the fact request for a two foot variance from the required side yard setback. Um, you have information regarding the property. The original construction of the house was in 1910. Uh, it is in the general residential zone and conforms to the lot size and frontage requirements in that uh, 
in that zone. Uh, the existing roof structure that was constructed uh, over the uh, front patio, uh, basically making, uh, for all intents and purposes, a front porch. Um, the 237 square foot roof structure is across the full width of the front of the home. Um, and at the same side setback, which along Tyler Street is uh, two foot closer than what the current code allows um, for side setbacks. Uh, so the Planning Commission may authorize variances as noted in the zoning code. Um, and uh, staff has gone through the required criteria. Um, I have, have found uh, conformance uh, with each of the criterion. Um, and unless you all want me to go through every single one, I do want to highlight one of them that I anticipate uh, will warrant some discussion, but I can certainly discuss any of them. Um, the one that I wanted to highlight, uh, not, let me get the, the right, um, number four, which is on the second page of the report, and it talks about that the variance request it, or the need does not result from the actions of the applicant um, or her, his or her agent, a violation of the code or previously granted variance. Um, I don't, and staff does not interpret that to mean that if someone makes a mistake, uh, that it's somehow a punitive um, code provision that basically says, well, if you make a mistake and you build something without a permit and, you know, you then you come in and try to fix that, that we're going to, um, you know, punish you basically. Uh, what that really, I, I, I believe what that code provision really addresses more is if the reasoning for the request is simply because of the actions of the applicant or violation of a code, so in other words, if you would not consider the application or you would not consider the request had it been made before the construction occurred, um, if really truly the only reason is the action that the, that the applicant or the contractor took for the variance, then um, that would be, that would be uh, uh, how that uh, provision applies. But as we have, um, instructed previously in these kinds of after the fact uh, situations, you know, basically we try to look at it under the justification as if it was not an after the fact. You have to make uh, the findings, whether it was requested before or after the construction. And if you can, if you look at it and you determine that it's justified and you would, you would support it if it had been proposed before the construction was done, then that is the same um, support that staff suggests that you give now. Um, and there are other provisions that, uh, you know, uh, they, with, with permitting, they will um, have to pay after the fact fees and that type of thing. So if you agree with staff that they have met the criterion uh, and the justification, regardless of whether it's after the fact or not, um, then that's, then, then the variance is justified. Um, if that doesn't make sense, we can talk about it some more, but um, I wanted to just highlight that because I anticipated there might be some confusion. There generally is in these kinds of situations. Um, we did hear from uh, uh, one uh, area neighbor, she's not an adjacent neighbor, but uh, she's uh, a few doors away, uh, that supported the variance request. That's under num number five, as noted in the staff report. We did also hear from another neighbor um, that seemed to be in support of the variance. Actually, I think the gist of her email was more uh, in opposition to the zoning code, but um, I, I took that as uh, they would be supportive of uh, granting of the variance. Um, so that's the only staff, um, I'm sorry, that's the only uh, citizen comment that we've received to date. Uh, we've not received any um, adverse comments from any of the reviewing agencies. Uh, CSU did check out. They were 
initially somewhat concerned that uh, the, the, the improvement might be too close to uh, an overhead electrical line, but it turned out that it's not, um, so that was fine. Um, staff finds the request is in conformance with Plan Manitou policies. Um, the proposed construction is under the square footage that requires uh, wildfire mitigation, uh, evaluation, or a geohazards report, um, and there's no indication of any geologic issues. Um, and staff uh, doesn't believe there's any floodplain on this in this area uh, on this property. So staff does recommend the Planning Commission approve V2006 for an east side, and that's um, the applicant had noted that number one, his name is misspelled. Um, it's F E Z E E T E E. It's, so it's not F A, it's F E, I believe. And he also had indicated that um, this was actually the west side of the property. I think I, we need to look at that because based on the site plan, with north at the top where Plainview Place, it would be the east side of the property, I believe. But anyway, it's the Tyler side, or the well, it shows Oak Place on the site plan, but I believe that's actually Tyler, um, and so it's on that side of uh, of the property. Uh, so for a, a side yard setback of five feet six inches, where seven feet six inches is required for the front patio roof, as shown on the improvement location certificate, dated March seventeenth, twenty twenty provided with the staff report and with the following conditions. One, the variance is applicable only to construction of the roof structure as depicted in the application. Uh, materials and submitted for this request, no increase in the dimensions of the structure or enclosure is allowed under this variance approval. And two, a property improvement permit and regional building permit shall be applied for within 60 days of the approval and obtained for the roof structure the construction shall comply with all applicable uh, codes and inspection requirements. And then staff had noted the findings uh, as required for the variance uh, on the, the last page of the report um, and noted that if approved, the variance is valid for a year and will expire should a building permit for the proposed improvement not be obtained. A written request for an extension from the planning director uh, is within 30 days prior to the expen uh, ex expiration uh, is allowed. Um, staff notes, however, that an after that since this is an after the fact request, the ability to show good cause for any extension would be unlikely. So they do need to get that uh, permitted and bring it into conform fully into conformance um, without having to go through any kind of extension process. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Okay, um, we want to bring the applicant up. He should be coming in. There we go. Okay, um, would you uh, state your name and address for the record? It's Timothy Fazette, and I live at 317 Plainview Place, Manitou Springs. Okay, are you happy with the staff recommendations? Oh yes, they've been wonderful and helpful. Okay, yeah. do you have anything else you'd like to add? or? Um, I know it's it's not applicable because you're not supposed to use anything about it being in existence. Um, the contractor didn't really understand because they were out of states. They didn't understand all the permitting stuff. Um, and they're, they're working really hard with us to get this all corrected. Um, but in the last year and a half, it's all of our neighbors have, have enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's been really pleasant to have. It's made the house definitely look more inviting. So um, I'm hoping that you, you, um, Okay, are any questions for the applicant? 
Okay, thanks. If we have any more questions, we'll, we'll bring you back. Um, so now the public hearing is open. Would anybody in the audience like to comment on this? I guess there are no hands raised. So um, with that, I'll close the public hearing and we're at the table to consider this item. Tip? I think that the staff did a very good report. I find it quite convincing. Um, they set out the issues very, very clearly, and Michelle raised uh, one issue that was in, helped explain it, uh, something that was kind of irrelevant, but I'm quite comfortable with this um, variance. Okay. Is that a motion? Other people might want to say something first, but... No brainer. So I'll go ahead and move approval of variance 2006 with all staff's findings and recommendations. Okay, I'll second, second that. Okay, I think David got there first on that second. So um, any discussion? Okay, then let's vote. And that's unanimous. So. You've got it. And um, thank you, Timothy. Okay. We can talk tomorrow. He's still on. Alan, I'd like to offer a comment <laughs> for what it's worth, which may be uh, nothing. Uh, that uh, one of the letters in support made some allegations about the planning department's approach to these things, which seemed to me to be unfounded. Uh, I don't see any evidence that. Uh, we're rigid about interpreting the, the code, or I, I think uh, I've seen several instances in the short time I've been on, on uh, the planning commission where uh, the planning department and the planning commission has been over backwards to understand and support an applicant's uh, uh, request. And um, it's just a, a way of saying thank you to the planning department. Yeah, I'll second that. I feel like, um... You know, you, they get it from both sides. Some people complain that they're too permissive and some people say mm -hmm. it's too restrictive and it's just the nature of the game, I think. Absolutely. Christine? I, I just wanted to comment on that. Yeah, you know, Timothy, Tim was fantastic because all of this really came about as COVID was happening. And so he was very patient with us as well because we as staff were in the process of vacating city hall moving home trying to get set up working with this contractor out of state um there were you know there probably were numerous times where we were not available and you know god bless him he was very flexible and worked with us so i really appreciate that um and his contractor did try really hard so yeah <laughs> timothy actually has asked to confirm. So Tim, if you can hear, yes, you, you got approval. So if you want to contact me um, tomorrow, that would be great. Okay, I also sent a reply to his text. So great. Hopefully that's that's good. So I um, guess we can move on to the next item of business, other business. Uh, 2021 budget considerations impacting planning commission. Christine, were you going to talk a little bit about this? I am. Sorry, it took me a minute to unmute my That's all right. That's all right. device here. Yeah, so I wanted to take just a minute and touch base with you all and let you know what is happening um, with the 2020 budget as well as looking forward to 2021. Um, as you can imagine, it's been sort of a real roller coaster this spring trying to understand what revenues would be for the city and how to prepare our budgets and staffing accordingly. Um, we did go through um, a pretty um, a pretty aggressive reduction scenario in the budgets. That amended budget is going to be, we're finalizing that this week. Um, and we will be presenting that to city council, I think in two weeks. That's, that's the goal. That's what we're working towards. Um, 
for the planning commission, there was $1,150 in the 2020 budget. That has not been impacted. That is still there. Um, so I don't, and I don't anticipate that there's going to be a need to um, modify that for the rest of the year. So those dollars, while they're not a lot, they are still there for you. Um, looking forward to 2021, we, we really don't know what to expect. The state of Colorado, um, ha, it, their economic advisors and forecasters are recommending that we consider, that all communities in Colorado consider their 2021 budget to be 85 to 90 percent of um, their 2019 budget. So that's what we do, or revenue forecast, excuse me, revenue forecast. So that's what we're doing right now as well. While we're finishing up this amended budget for 2020, we're going back and looking at 2019, trying to understand the numbers. What did it mean for the COG? What can we expect for new applications, potential businesses, that sort of thing? Um, we had expected to really already have um, an initial draft of our 2021 20, budget done by early July. Um, we, ha we haven't even begun that. So our goal now is to, um, to have that pretty much done by the 1st of August and be able to present that to council. In the meantime, I wanted to make sure that we have a discussion or at least have an opportunity to have a discussion here about what your 2021 needs might be. Um, I obviously am not, was not here last year and don't really um, have an expectation of or understanding of what that process is, but I wanted to make sure that you have sufficient opportunity for input. That was the first thing I wanted to um, offer. And then the second is that there a date has not been sent for the committees and commissions to present to city council their 2021 priorities. Um, there's some discussion about just incorporating it into the 2021 budget presentation. So I wanted to offer that as well. If you had an opinion, if you wanted to um, have a separate presentation to council and so that you can have an in-depth discussion about your 2021 priorities. Um, now is probably the time to start thinking about that. And um, I will make sure that at an administrative level, we're, we're acting accordingly. Um, so there's just a lot of discussion and a lot of unknowns um, right now. Any, anybody have any questions for staff on this? I, Christine, I know you're you're new, but um, I think I've asked this year after year after year. Our our wage has not improved, <laughs> and I, it's, it's time for a raise. You know, we've right. got the money, but we've okay, got a thousand dollars. You get a fifty percent raise, Mike, just like last That's year. Right. <laughs> you get a thousand dollars. Here's what I was thinking, because I would I could appreciate that, right? I serve on some boards and commissions in the region. I totally get that. So I think what we should do is increase our food allowance. So when the time comes that we can get together, I'll bring like some, some food, maybe some shrimp barbecue or something like that. So we'll increase your food budget. How's that? <laughs> I didn't even know we had a budget. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. So anything is Create an one. <laughs> okay. And, and do we plan to still go ahead with the code rewrite? Is that still... Happy. Yeah, good. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I would expect that next month I'll have, um, I bring a pretty substantial update on where we are. So it has been awarded. Um, we did receive, just received the contract about two weeks ago from the state. Um, so I have been working and I'm not, I'm probably about halfway through on, um, on the RFP process and exactly what we want for a consultant. Um, you know, in an ideal situation, I would get some input from you guys on what you would like to see around that. I feel like um, there's a lot we can offer before the consultant or any consultant gets started, right? Um, I'm not looking towards a consultant to take this process outside of us, develop it and come back. I'd really like it to be integrated into what we're already doing really there's so you know michelle was laughing at me today because you know it's like every day 
oh, that's a problem with the code. And I write it on a sticky note and I stick it up on my bulletin board in my office. You know, <laughs> I think I added two or three today just from one conversation. So um, yeah, so we're still gonna move forward with that. Um, the budget for it crosses 2020 and 2021. So it'll be over two years. And when do we anticipate there will be an RFP available? I'm hoping to have that in the next two weeks. Okay. So um, the state was about six weeks behind the schedule we had hoped for. Um, obviously COVID totally impacted their ability to get the contract put together and signed and then out to us. Um, and they were scrambling because um, the governor's office as well is looking towards amending budgets. And so any dollars that hadn't been um, collected and, and finalized, they were grabbing. So Dola was working really hard to get contracts out. So, so anyway, so we're probably about six, maybe seven weeks behind where I wanted to be on this. I think next month I, you know, I will want to have a little bit of a robust conversation with you guys. Okay. Tip, uh, Christine, you? oh, sorry. Tip. Christine, I would just say that as a consultant to the federal government, I'm glad that you are, are uh, making this integrated approach rather than just turning it over to them and um, then responding to whatever they come up with. Absolutely. I mean, most, most of you know, I most recently have come from, I have an engineering consultant firm and, and kind of see the best and the worst of it firsthand. And obviously David, you do too. And um, so um, I think it's probably fair to say I'm pretty aggressive in how I want to manage the consultant and, and have them work with us. Tip, did you have a question? There, this might be part of the discussion of revising the code, um, and maybe not, I'm just not sure, but uh, one issue that came, two issues that came up about, I'm thinking 15 months ago or a year and a half ago, um, had to, one was about uh, coming up with more explicit guidelines, design guidelines for the recently, renovated eastern part of the of Manitou Springs um, and that we had had when we approved the hotel that's now going up um, we had a lot of concerns that we were not given much guidance about what kinds uh, what what the buildings that are going to go up along that quarter would look like and it's interesting because there had been a lot of sur surveys of the community ahead of time and then that all sort of seemed to fall out and so I would we were worried because before COVID that there was going to be rapid um, uh, an attempt by a lot of people to go into that area which had been so nicely beautified and, and whatnot to um, to uh, to take advantage of that situation, which we want to happen, in fact. And so I would just urge us that we be um, very, um, we don't lose much time on that issue, because I do think that, that there's gonna be a lot of development there. And the other issue that came up at one of the, or two of those work group meetings, if I recall correctly, that um, made a lot of us very concerned had to do with the potential for condoization of, of, of um, properties in Manitou and that we didn't have any guidelines to, to um, about that at all. And when you think through uh, some of the potential impacts of that without any guidance, that was actually almost scary, I thought. Now again, we haven't had anything come particular, but we were told not only by the previous director, um, but also by some of our consultants, was that something that needed to be addressed very expeditiously. So I don't want those two to fall out with the changing leadership, which, you know, of course, when new people come in, they don't necessarily have historic memory about all the things that happened before. But those are two issues to me that are fairly pressing that I would want to have addressed. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've tried to come into this in more of a listening role because I know that there's been a lot of work done and make sure we go with that. And obviously Michelle and Dylan are just, you know, they, they know where we need to go. So I appreciate that. I, you know, and I'll be wanting to probably bring some of that back and, and talk a little bit more about it as we get into yeah. this. I think it would, might be a good plan to, rather than to go into more detail now to have an item on our agenda, because there may be people in the public that want to weigh in on this too. 
because you know we get absolutely yeah. all the I think you're right and you know I can say that um, Colorado Springs has been engaging in this they're about nine months ahead of us fountain um, I think is done um, so there are many communities in Colorado and communities that are right here that are in the process of or wrapping up their own code rewrite and revisions um, Colorado Springs just passed um, an ADU ordinance and um, so there's a lot of good information right here. So I think you're right. I think, I think there may be people who are watching that and um, will want to have some input. Okay. Um, so thank you for letting me share some of that with you. I it just, you know, I said to Michelle that I asked her if I could have a moment on the agenda just to share some of that with you. You can always have a moment on our agenda. You're the planning <laughs> director. We, right. We allow that. Thanks. <laughs> Christine, a, a quick question. Uh, you referred to the COG. Do, do you anticipate, or could you just say briefly what you anticipate regarding the COG in the next? Sure, next year? sure. So, um, boy, so we're just about done. Um, we've got a little bit more to do, obviously, with their application, you know, and we can, I'm sure you guys will see a little bit more about that later. Um, they're expecting to have a soft opening in May. They don't quite know what COVID means. They have greater capacity um, to move people, right? You know, if they have an extra, another, another line going and more cars. But with social distancing and what needs to be done and how many people are actually going to come, they just don't have a good idea of that. So, what we're just what we're talking about and what they're telling us is um, soft opening in May. Next summer will probably be closer to something more normal. Um, from a construction standpoint, they're doing really well. I think things are moving along nicely. I'm going to spend Friday morning with them. Um, Ted's going to take me up to the top and back down and share some of where we are. So I'm going to take some pictures and I'll share that and send that out to you guys. Um, but yeah, so from a revenue standpoint, I think what we're going to do is um, sort of count on about three hundred thousand dollars from from revenue from them, which isn't much more or less than what we've been doing the last couple of years. Um, COVID's probably going to push their big numbers into twenty twenty two. Any more comments or questions? Thank you. And you I bet. guess the final item is uh, notice of council action and updates. Sure. So um, council did approve the ordinance uh, with the temporary six month moratorium on acceptance of applications for vacation rentals. And um, actually, uh, Christine and I are going to meet tomorrow and talk about all the things we both have on our plate that we are struggling to uh, get to and try to work out a, uh, I hope, uh, some solutions and um, uh, some priorities, but working on the short-term rental regulations. Uh, the first item is to do a online survey that we can send out um, and then, you know, work on the regulations based on input that we've received to date and then the, the survey input um, so we have something to bring to you um, that's what our next steps need to be on that so um, I think what we need to do is probably put everything on a calendar and work back from there and try to figure out what some deadlines are so anyway that that's what's happening with that okay thanks any questions nope Okay, well, if uh, there's nothing else to add, I guess it's time to adjourn unless someone is opposed. Let's adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.